A blessed Sunday to one and all. Let me read to you a major part or the major parts of uh, the Lenten or the Passion Sunday text, which is Mark 14 and 15. Let me begin by reading to you Mark 14, 1 to 11, and then I'll jump to Mark 15 in a little while. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stilt and kill him. For they said, Not during the least, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me, for you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial, and truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. Or Max 15, chapter 16, onwards. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace. This is the governor's headquarters, headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in purple cloak and twisting together a crown of thorns. They put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him and stripped him of the purple cloak and put his clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander, and Rufus to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews, and with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So all the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He save others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, King of Israel, came down, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole, uh, whole land until nine hour. Verse 34, And all the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with swine and put it on a reed, gave it to him and drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to, to take him down. And Jesus a loud cry and breathed his last. And the temple, or the curtain of the temple, was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it was his way, he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the young girl, and Joseph, and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when the evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body 
of Jesus. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, verse 46, and take, taking him down, wrapped him in a linen shroud and laid him in the tomb and had been cut out of the rock, that had been cut out from the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, so where he was laid. Mga kapatid, ang Ebanghelyo po ng ating Panginoon. Amen. This Sunday, I would like to recall that what we have been doing so far is rending our hearts. And we have been claiming the promises God has for us. Last Sunday, with our sub theme, we have claimed the new covenant and we have allowed it to be written in our heart. And finally, today, this Sunday, we would like to talk about the promise of the one who comes. And given what, was, what Jesus went through in these two chapters that we have read, I'd like us to celebrate the promises in the events of the one who came and see what God has for us, especially in these challenging times, silver lining ikanga ng ating mga kababayan ng ng ating mga kapatid ng mga Amerikano. Una, na gusto ko pong i-celebrate natin is the promise of overcoming evil with good that is demonstrated by the unnamed woman. The setting, as the Bible says, is in Bethany and it is a celebration of goods. Jesus had been healing the lepers and the sick, especially Simon the leper, and they are specifically in the home of the same. And this is a case of good hospitality offered to Jesus in return to the good for what he did, especially to Simon the leper. Jesus is our model in doing good and overcoming evil with good. On the other hand, the religious authorities were looking for a way of doing bad to arrest Jesus by stilt and kill him as the scripture says in verse 1 and 2 and this division ends with Judas planning to go to the authorities to provide them with the means to do kill this Jesus verse 10 to 11 in the middle of this story is an unnamed woman who did good by anointing Jesus I want, I want you and me to note the high praises that Jesus gives or gave to this woman in verse 9. Jesus said, By my word of honor, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This anonymous woman simply walked into the room where the men were eating, opens an expensive alabaster jar and anoints Jesus. And when she anointed Jesus, her actions provoked an angry response from the audience. They said, such a waste. Think of the poor. But Jesus defended the woman and said, let her alone. She has performed a good service for me. She has done the good that she could. That is in contrast and highlighted the failure of the inner group of the disciples who is not getting what Jesus had been teaching way back on the transfiguration. Hindi po naunawaan ng mga disipulo yung tinuturo ni Heso Kristo na siya ay mamatay at siya ay may lilibing. But here at last, on the day before all that Jesus had been teaching begins to unfold, nandito ang isang babae who demonstrated that she understood what Jesus taught na si Kristo ay mamatay, mamamatay. And this is implied by her anointing Jesus' body in anticipation of His death. At last, may nakaunawa kay Jesus, may nakaunawa ng kanyang misyon, at may nakaunawa ng mangyayari sa kanya, at ito'y pinatunayan niya sa kanyang mga gawa. Pause for a moment, brothers and sisters, and ask yourselves, have I understood what Jesus has been teaching about his mission, his death, his burial? And of course, later, yung resurrection. If we understood 
Jesus, mga kapatid. Then let us prove our loyalty to Jesus. As our founder, John Wesley said, let us do all the good we can to all the people if we can, as long as we ever can. Ito po ang hinihingi ng ating Panginoon that He modeled na para matalo natin ang mga evils na dumarating that are run, run sucking and run havoking our society, kailangan po nating ipagpatuloy ang mabuting mga gawain na ating ginagawa. This woman had done good being loyal to Jesus and anointing Jesus. Judas is about to sell Jesus into the hands of the authorities. Peter will deny him. The rest will run away in fear. Who among this group should be remembered throughout the world wherever the good news is proclaimed? Who among us shall be remembered in remembrance for doing good to Jesus amidst these trying times or to anyone who is suffering, rejected, or is mar marginalized? Kung nangarod na giti al-ilokano, ikankantante yung himno, aramid tayo tulat malagip na. I believe na nagiti aramid tayo tiyag talineed kaya nagbaligi dito'y daga kinuray pa'y Ijay langit. Jesus said what she has done or what the woman has done will be told in remembrance of her. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. And the promise is, thou good and faithful servant, now enter into the joy of my Lord. The promiser promised also that whatever we sow in this earth, we shall reap in this world and the next. Yan po yung Unang gusto ko pong i-celebrate natin. Let's continue to celebrate the good that we do and let's continue to do it. Because this is that which will overcome evil. Pagpatuloy lang po natin. Pangalawa is yung palagi nating sine-celebrate the promise in the Last Supper. The setting shifted to Jerusalem to find a place where they will eat the Passover meal. Dito po, they will butcher a lamb. And at the time of Jesus, some lambs were killed and offered a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. John the Baptist is reported by the Gospel of, Gospel of John as making this identification with Jesus. Sabi niya, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29, our NRSV. In this meal, mga pati, Jesus identifies himself with the Passover lamb. His death is a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins and or liberation for freedom. Ito yung napakaganda. And for covenant, for bonding together with God as God's people, to live together as God desires us to live together. This promise is for many who shall respond and believe. Sabi nga, this ng Bible, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for you. Mga kapatid, ang nakapagpapabigat ng buhay ng tao, higit sa lahat, ay ang kasalanan. Pero mga kapatid, it's good to celebrate this Lenten season that God has taken all of the, these sins away and you can experience freedom inside you that will affect your activities wherever you will be. Ito po yung isang promise of the one who came and it is promised as he died on the cross. I hope we will appropriate these things. Pangatlo, the promise behind Peter's denial and the happenings in the Garden of Gethsemane. Once again, Jesus reveals what is about to befall him even in the meal. And once again, the disciples vehemently denied. Amidst the pain of Peter's denial and the disciples' future betrayal and the secret and cunning plans of the religious elites, na natiling si Kristo ay tumayo na matibay and he outwitted his enemies. Mga kapatid, the Bible promised that we can be partakers of his divine nature. As we listen, as we receive the message of this Lenten celebration, naniniwala po ako 
that little by little, yung image ni Jesus ay nagiging part ng ating sistema at makikita natin na kahit he was betrayed by Judas, he was arrested, he was abandoned by his followers, he was tried, he was denied, he was tortured, he was brutally executed. It is amazing to see the continued patience of the Lord with Peter, James, and John and with the people crucifying him. Mark describes Jesus as distressed, agitated, troubled, anguished, and full of sorrow. His soul is deeply grieved, overwhelmed, and crushed by sorrow by the events that lies ahead, the death and the pain. But amidst this, he still cared for the three disciples, and he still cared for those people who are crucifying or who are planning to crucify him. Sabi nga niya when he was crucified, Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Ganito po ang pag-ibig ng Diyos at gusto ng Panginoon na magkaroon tayo ng ganitong pag-ibig kahit sa mga panahong ganito na maraming nangyayaring mga bagay-bagay na nagbibigay ng kabigatan sa tao at bigat sa buhay the love that is displayed even behind Peter's denial and the betrayals, mga kapatid, ito po ang sana yakapin natin at ito naman po ay binibigay ng ating Panginoon sa ating lahat. When we receive this love and care from the Lord Jesus, then we can care for the world that are hurting. And then, one of the things also that we can glean and celebrate here is as Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, is the promised power in prayer. Jesus was in anguish. He was in real crisis. Kaya nga sabi niya, deliver me from this hour and from this cup. This what what he was wanting. Ito yung desire niya. His flesh was weak. He was tempted. He is tempted to abandon God's calling for him. He is tempted to abandon proclaiming God's kingdom under the threat of pain and death. Tempted, he was tempted to give up. Jesus also prayed for courage. Sabi niya, not what I will or the capitulation to the violent injustice of the powers of his world, but your will, proclamation of God's kingdom of non-violent justice be done. If there is a temptation to give up sa iyong mga buhay, ito po ang napakagandang tularan na kapag tayo po ay nasa crisis, the best thing to do is to look up and pray to God for courage and strength so that we can stand all these pains, all these evils, and go forth and proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus praying three times, He emerged once again as the decisive, unwavering, active son of man who moves to engage this hour. Look at his courage. Sabi niya, enough. In Mark 14, 41 to 42, sabi niya, enough. The hour has come. The son of man is bestrayed into the hands of the sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. In the face of this world's ways of deception, violence, and response to inflicting pain and death, we need such courage. And this courage can only come from God. Mga kapatid, kailangan mo ang courage sa panahon ito. Kailangan ko ang courage sa panahon ito. And the way to get it is to ask God just like Jesus. While Jesus has been praying, Judas has been betraying. And one of the promises that we can get from this dark betrayal from Mark and Peter is very, very, very important. As it was in Jesus' days, betrayals will happen not only once, but can be multiplied. As it was with the curious incident of a young man, of the young man who runs off naked from Jesus, si Mark po yun, according to sa mga Bible scholars, siya po yung lalaking tumakbo at nahubaran siya dahil sa kanyang katatakbo. At siya po yung author ng gospel na ito. 
Tumakbo siya. Pero bumalik siya. He repented. Mga kapatid, denying Christ or we might have denied Christ or we might be betraying Christ in one way or another. But a promise of restoration by grace is available. Kung minsan tumakbo ka, maaring dahil ikaw ay naging duwag, kapatid, I like to tell you that kung papano po bumalik si Mark and Jesus welcome him, God can welcome you and me also. The foretelling of Peter's action of denying Jesus three times, pinapakita po niya or kinoconfirm po niya for his followers, ikaw at ako, the wisdom and mercy and the compassion of Jesus. There is amazing grace indeed na nag-aantay sa iyo, sa akin, bumalik ka lang, kapatid. And I believe you will be received by the Lord. Finally, my friends, there is the promise behind Jesus' final degradation, death, and burial. Crucifixion was a particularly brutal form of public execution that was intended not only to kill the person, but it is intended also to kill any lingering thoughts of following his example. They could have just cut his head off as happened to John the Baptist, but that would not do for Jesus. He must be killed, but he must also be degraded and dishonored publicly. That is what the flogging, mocking, and stripping naked do. Jesus cry, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Is surely the most heart-rending and dreaded words in Scripture. Heartrending because of the pain of despair that has been added to the physical pain. Dreaded because one of our worst fears is that in our time of greatest need, we will be abandoned and left alone. Whatever happened to the scripture, though you die, yet you shall live, nor not even death can separate us from God's love. If Jesus, God's Son, God's beloved, feels abandoned, what hope have I and what, ho what hope have you? He died so that you will not die. That is the fact. That is a fact. His suffering is like a vaccine. Na kapag tinamaan ka ng virus, the after effect will not be brutal. Why? Because of the vaccine. It is the same with the power of sin. Jesus took the heaviest blow. He took the heaviest, heaviest blow so that when that sin will recur, will come back, it has no more power to kill you. Yan po ang napakaganda sa ginawa ng Panginoon. So dapat mga kapatid, sa Lenten season na ito, sana'y patuloy po nating itaas ang nag-iisang pangalan ng ating Panginoon. Amen? One more thing. The curtain in the temple that separates the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple area is split into two from top to bottom. Mga kapatid, nabuksan na po ang trono ng Panginoon. Pwede po tayong lumapit sa Kanya. Direct access na po. We can receive all the rich promises in Jesus Christ. It can come to us because Jesus made a way so that we can go to the Father. Mga kapatid, ano man po ang mga pinagdadaanan niyo po ngayon, pinagdadaanan natin. We can go directly to the Father and He will come to us. One more thing, mga kapatid. Though Jesus was betrayed, denied, and abandoned, may mga kababaihan, mga kapatid, na naiwan na kasama ni Jesus. What does this mean? There are those who are like the women, we men of the Lord in this day, who will support and care for our needs. Hindi natin kailang mag-despair na wala na si Jesus because He has left brothers and sisters who can care for us as we journey in this hard life. Panghuli, mga kapatid, ay yung promise behind Jesus' burial. Gusto ko pong ulitin yung Nasambit ko last Sunday na isang kultura po ng mga kapatid sa Ifugao. That when a person is buried, 
lahat po ng mga bagay tungkol sa Kanya, magmula sa maliit hanggang sa malaki, ay isasamang kasama na dadalhin sa burial niya. And when I was reading the scripture, ito yung nakita ko. And ito yung good news sa ating lahat. Jesus sealed every promise in the Bible. It means, yung pangako niya matutupad. He has sealed it. Kinuha niya. He has taken all the evils that has, uh, that has come to us, especially yung sin. Sabi ng Bible, He has taken our sins as far as the east is from the west. He has taken all our iniquities. So great is His compassion. And He has hurled all our in- iniquities on the depths of the sea. And Hebrews 8.12 8, says, We'll remember their sins no more. Ito po yung napakagandang ginawa ng ating Panginoon. Yung mga promises of overcoming evil with good. Yung mga promises behind Mark and Peter's betrayal. Yung mga promises behind Jesus' final degradation. And yung promise behind Jesus' burial. Ay lahat po ito para sa atin. I pray that this Lenten season and the coming Easter, sana this will cause us indeed to celebrate because Jesus has provided or has done everything on the cross. All we need to do is to appropriate it by faith. May God help us so that we will indeed celebrate even now and this coming Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mga kapatid, allow me to pray with you, and let us help one another appropriate the promises of the one who comes. Ay, pray man na namin. Panginoong Diyos, uh, kinasadlakan po namin na uh, pandemya at kasama ng mga challenges, trials that are coming upon humanity and upon us. Kami po ay lumalapit sa inyo, Panginoong Diyos, to ask you to help us appropriate the promise of overcoming evil by doing good. Panginoon, tulungan nyo kami na maging katulad nyo na kung papano po kayo gumawa ng bambuti kahit na kayo'y dinuduraan, kahit kayo'y ipinapako, kahit kayo'y pinapahirapan, you still did good. And Father, we ask you that you give us this spirit that is in Jesus so that we will be able to overcome evil indeed with good. And Father, yes, help us also to appropriate the blessing of the Last Supper. Father, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We have sinned in one way or the other. And we pray that, as John said, that you are the Lamb of God who takes the sin of the world. May you kindly take our sins. May you kindly forgive all our sins and make us clean. And Father, we pray that your divine nature, Lord, will continue to be part of our system. You promise that as we follow you, we will be like you. And so even now, we claim that promise. Na sana, Panginoong Diyos, kung papano po ninyo inibig ang mga taong nagbitray sa inyo, ay yung mga taong umayaw sa inyo at yung mga taong malipusta po sa inyo. Sana tulungan po ninyo kami. Ilagay po ninyo sa amin ang iyong pag-ibig, Panginoong Diyos, especially sa mga kapatid na hindi pa po binuksan ang kanilang mga puso para sa iyong pag-ibig. May you kindly make a way, Father God, so that your love will be poured out, so that we will even care, Lord God, for those who persecute us, so that we will bless those who curse us, and we will love those who betray us. Father, we pray also 
that the power of prayer or the promise of prayer will be upon each one of us, especially in these times of pandemic. Kami po ay humihiling kasama ng aming iglesia, ng mga metodista, mga iglesia Panginoong Diyos na Lord nandito sa aming neighborhood and even the churches, Lord, local and international, even national. Yes, Lord. Ang buong iglesia, hinihiling namin na sana'y patuloy na tulungan nyo kami upang, Lord, maging mga prayerful people po kami. At dito namin masusumpungan ang courage na noon ay nagkaroon po kayo sa panahong kayo ay dumada, dumada, dumaan sa krisis. How we need, Lord, that your church, once again, will learn to really pray like you. And so we pray, teach us, teach your, your people, teach your church to pray. And yes, Lord, we continue to ask you that as you were buried, sana, Panginoong Diyos, sa aming buhay, maitanim na lahat, Panginoong Diyos, ng kung anumang sakit ng kalooban, all the guilt, and all the evils that are trying to destroy us. Sana sa pamamagitan po ng inyong kapangyarihan. Lord, you will overcome all this evil. You have buried all of these things. And we pray that as Easter Sunday is approaching, sana po, even today, yung joy mag-start na dahil we are forgiven, dahil we are accepted, dahil your grace and mercy will continue to abound and you will see us victorious. You will see us joyful. You will see us with all our needs met because you did it all on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you in advance because we know Though you were left seemingly alone, we will never be left alone because of what you did. And this we are grateful. Panginoon, sa lahat ng kabutihan na dinulot ng iyong kamatayan sa krus ng Kalbaryo, kami po ay nagpapasalaman. At patuloy po kaming magpupuri. And as our way of doing that, we surrender to you our very lives. We surrender to you our spirit, we surrender to you our soul, we surrender to you our body, and every material thing you have entrusted to us. May you use this and may you use us all for your glory. Include our churches, include our church, the leaders of our church, our bishops, Father, our deuses, our deaconesses, our lay people, wherever your church is planted here in our road. These are prayer in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. Mga kapatid, now you have waved your palms at Him. Now you have followed Him on the par parade roof. You have seen Jesus for yourself. You know that He is real. Therefore, go and continue to see Him in the world. Go where He goes and do what He commands. And may the peace of God rule and abide with you now and forever. Amen.